Hello, Simon Jones here from hitfilm.com and I'm using a Mac. This is very exciting because this week we released HitFilm to Ultimate on the Mac platform for the first time. So at long last, we are cross-platform. Of course, this means that I also have to learn how to use a Mac. So do bear with me if anything strange happens during the progress of this video. Okay, so let's have a look at HitFilm on the Mac. One thing that became possible thanks to the support of our Kickstarter backers is that we were actually able to add two completely new effects to both the Mac and the PC versions. So that's what I'm going to take a look at in this video. Okay, so here we have HitFilm running on a MacBook Air. We're actually using an Intel HD 5000 graphics card here, I think. So that's a fairly low-end card. It's kind of hitting our entry-level requirements. Um, but HitFilm is still extremely usable, even on a machine like this that is designed to be you know, portable and lightweight. Uh, here I've got the footage from our original HitFilm 2 trailer. This is actually the ungraded version. So I'm going to use this to demonstrate a couple of these new effects. Okay, so this footage looked pretty nice to start with. Uh, but what we're going to do is kick off things by taking a look at the new anamorphic lens flare effect. Um, so before I do that, let's have a, just a quick look at some of the other lights and flares we have that we've had for a while in HitFilm. Um, perhaps the most familiar one is the light flares effect. If we add that on, you can see this is a fairly standard kind of light flare effect where it's built up from multiple elements. And as you move this flare around, you can see that all the pieces animate as you would expect. So I'll just get rid of that and we're going to add on the new anamorphic lens flare. So this is quite a different look to the standard lens flare. Okay, so here we have it added. It's fairly subtle using the default settings. Let's just bring up the controls here. Okay, so if we toggle this on and off, you can see the difference and that we're getting this vertical streaking coming off those main lights to the top left and top right. And this is essentially what the anamorphic lens flare does. It analyzes the frame and then creates the streaks coming off of that. Now, depending on your settings and the background footage, this can get very different kinds of results. But let's go through some of the settings to see how it works. So first up, we have the threshold setting. This essentially determines which parts of the frame are used to generate the flares. A higher threshold will reduce the amount of the frame being used for generation. And then if we lower it down, you can see that more and more of the frame is actually creating those flares. So if you drop it all the way down, you're going to get a very washed out, overly bright frame. So generally speaking, you're going to want to keep it fairly high if you want a more realistic kind of effect. So in this case, it's just coming off those really bright highlights from the lights. So if we just preview render some of this, you can see that the flaring is updating based on the movement in the video. So on top of the threshold, you then also have control over the intensity of the effect. So if we increase that, you can see a bit more clearly what exactly is going on here. Now, of course, as with all effects, depending on your settings, you can make things look far less realistic. So generally speaking, you probably want to keep your intensity fairly low. Um, but what we're going to do is just increase it a little bit so you can see more what's going on. Because the blur flare property can be used to create a more natural look. So if we drop it all the way down, you can see that these flare bands have very, very sharp edges. And then as we increase the blur, you can see it all smears out a little bit, which actually for a lot of uses, this can actually look more realistic, be a bit more subtle, less noticeable. Whereas when we've got a very low blur, you can see these bands here are extremely obvious as it's playing back. So we're just going to go back to the defaults by clicking on the reset button. The blend option uh, will be useful for some people depending on what options you're doing. So the default is screen, but you can also switch to some different blend modes None might be particularly useful because that just shows the flares on their own. So in this case, you can generate some really interesting visuals without having to be tied to the original footage. So if you're doing some motion graphic stuff or you just want to generate some kind of generic anamorphic streaking, that's a really easy way to do that. One thing that's interesting is you can have multiple streak setups. So you see we've just got one type of streak here. You can increase that to whatever you want. So we can increase that to two. You can see we now have some slight horizontal streaking going on. You, know, you can ramp this all the way up and things obviously get increasingly less realistic and a little crazy looking, but you know, it's up to you what you do with these effects. As always in HitFilm, you can fully customize just about everything. Right, we're going to go back to one streak and let's open up the streak to see what we can do inside here. Okay, this is where you can really get into exactly what the streaks look like. I'm just going to beef up the intensity a bit so you can see them a little more easily. So. The length slider determines, of course, the length of the streak. So you can reduce it down and have the streaks close in a lot more on the source. The intensity lets you adjust each streak type uh, independently. So 
if we increase this up to two, so we have two streaks going on here, you can actually go in here and maybe you want the vertical streak to be less intense, but you might want to just have that quite subtle whilst having your horizontal streak a lot more visible. The offset setting changes the threshold setting for each individual streak. So if you wanted the horizontal streak to be generated by less of the source footage, you can reduce the offset and you can see that restricts it even more. Now, what we have here is some orientation and alignment settings. So you can see by default, the first streak is a vertical streak, but you can just switch that to a horizontal streak without any problems. See here, we now have horizontal streaking coming off the various bright spots in the video. The rest of these settings determine where exactly the streaks are placed. So currently we have alignment to center, but we have a vertical pivot selected. This means that as we move around, the streaking is actually offset from the source. So you can see here we have this very bright patch down the bottom, which actually relates to the bright light up here. If we turn off the vertical pivot, you can see that these streaks tie more closely into their source positions. Additionally, you can come in and colorize the effects. So by default, they take their color from the source video, but we can use this to colorize them entirely to white, for example, or maybe you want to go in and change everything to blue lights. Hit OK, you can see we've now got really blue streaks. Now, again, this isn't looking particularly realistic, so it's up to you to determine the look you're going for, but the point is that you have quite a lot of control over what's going on. Let's just move forward to a later part of this sequence. This is quite a good example of how this is a useful effect. You can see we've got these bright spots down here. So say we wanted to add some flaring to those. You don't have to do any kind of manual positioning or animation for this. All you need to do is use the anamorphic lens flare technique and set up the settings appropriately. So maybe we'll go for a horizontal streak. We'll turn off the vertical pivot. You can see that these streaks are now attached directly to those lights. You can play around with the threshold to make sure it's just those areas, or you can lower the threshold to take more of the frame as its source. So a kind of soft, filtered look like this might be exactly what you're going for in a music video. So, here's a quick look at the anamorphic lens flare effect. Very powerful, very customizable. Uh, generally, you're going to want to use it in a fairly subtle manner, but at the same time, if you want to go all out, then you know, the option is there. Okay, let's take a look at the other new effect in HitFilm 2. We'll go back to our big wide shot here. And let's search for cine style. And what this is, is a quick and easy way to grade your footage. So here we have ungraded footage. Uh, we shot fairly flat, quite warm, but pretty flat. So you can see we don't have particularly strong blacks or anything like that. Um, I'm going to drag on cine style. Immediately we have a more cinematic appearance to our footage. It's a little bit dark perhaps, but we can of course go in and customize everything. And the point here is that this is kind of a one-stop, instant, cinematic look for your footage. Obviously, you can go in with HitFilm and play with every single colour correction and colour grading tool, and really go to town and explore and generate your own look. But if you just want a really quick look, or maybe a starting point, CineStyle is a really useful way to do it. Let's uh, go back to this opening shot here. So, here we have the original, shot in a broad daylight street, and then with CineStyle applied, you immediately get this kind of nice, more movie-like appearance. So let's have a look at what exactly is going on. First up, we have this S-curve adjustment. So this is changing the contrast based on the curve. If we lower it down, you can see that we have less contrast and then increase it up, we have a higher contrast look. But rather than just increasing the contrast across the board, it's doing it based on an S-curve. So it creates a more natural appearance. The colour adjustment that's going on is based around a kind of standard Hollywood look, so it's going for this kind of teal and orange look that is particularly popular in Hollywood at the moment. Uh, most movies you watch will have that kind of look. So if we drop it down, we'll reduce the amount of colour adjustment, we'll get our original colours back. If we ramp it all the way up, you can see that we're essentially going to a kind of blue and an orange look. You can fine-tune this further. So there it's particularly extreme. You can drop it down a bit for a more desaturated look. Uh, we can even hue shift it so that we have different colours going on. Again, you can go for really extreme settings like this or go for a more natural look. It's really up to your particular footage and different footage is going to require different settings. Uh, exposure can be used to adjust the brightness. Sometimes the cine style effect can drop down the brightness quite a bit on a shot so you might want to boost the exposure up once you've applied it. 
Saturation, of course, adjust your colors. So you can drop it down to black and white or take it all the way up to a more oversaturated look. And the point here is that all these settings are kind of taking multiple different effects that we've had in the past and putting it in one place in a really handy manner. So for example, here we have uh, an easy letterbox setting. This is optional, so you can turn it off and go back to your full frame if you want, or you can toggle it on and have a really quick, nice and easy letterbox effect. You can still offset this so you can move your frame around within that, so you can reframe your shots a little bit. So we dropped her down here to get more of a head back in. There's grain built into the effect. Again, this is optional. You can toggle it on and off. It's quite subtle to start with. Uh, you can increase it up and you can see that we've got more grain coming in here. Hopefully that's still visible in the YouTube compression. Uh, you can adjust the general appearance and size of that grain. There's a vignette as well that's applied by default. So you can see that's just vignetting around the edges. Again, completely optional. So you can kind of go to town with this effect or keep it quite subtle. So here we have a pretty extreme version but again, depending on what you're up to, that might be the look you're going for. It still runs pretty quickly. And this is like we were saying on a MacBook Air, just running off the standard HD 5000 graphics card, but it's processing this pretty much in real time. So whether you go for something extreme like this, or whether you dial it down a little bit and go for something a little bit more natural, it's really up to you. Uh, this Cine style effect won't be the ideal grading solution for every single project you do, but for a lot of work, you might find that it's a really quick and easy way to get a nice look. So those are the two new effects. They're available for free in the PC version. You can update your software from hitfilm.com. And of course, they're also in the launch version for Mac. So HitFilm 2 Ultimate is now available for Mac and PC. You can get it from hitfilm.com. Any questions, let us know. We're gonna go back to releasing more tutorials now that the Mac version is out the door. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you again to all our Kickstarter backers. We couldn't have done it this quickly without your help. Okay, we shall see you guys over on the HitFilm forums. Cheers.